All right, folks, what is up? One big bugger coming at you with Faster Than Light, In-Depth Look 101. That's Light 101, In-Depth Look. Call it whatever you want. Anyways, in this episode, we're going over the NG Cruiser. This one is known as, as you can see, Taurus. You start with two NGs and a human. Now, NGs can repair at twice the speed of anybody else so that's the advantage uh, that NG aliens have over others they don't have any real uh, drawbacks as I can figure so they're really good to have especially as uh, extra repair crew and of course you have your human the Taurus starts out with an ion blast 2 which is a strong ion weapon. Ion weapons don't do any actual damage, but they will temporarily shut down a system. Well, not completely shut down. They'll minus X amount of bars. Like in this one, it does one ion damage. So it'll, it'll take like one bar off of whatever it hits. And it is actually very fast firing. You also start with an already installed uh, drone system. And you start with an anti-ship drone. The anti-ship drone, the anti-ship drone, uh, continuously attacks the enemy as long as it is active, and um, it fires at a pretty fast rate. But most of the time, not fast enough that it'll actually penetrate an enemy shields uh, and hit the hull. Usually, an enemy shields can come up fast enough to uh, repel the attack drone. You also get an installed augment, the NG Mediboost Dispersal. What this does, as you can see up here, it'll show you right up here under the start when I mouse over it, floods the ship with NG Nano Medbots, healing the crew even when they're outside the med bay, although it is at, at a reduced speed. This is very, very helpful. Even though it is a reduced speed, um, it does allow your crew to heal wherever they are, so it allows you to put out fires, it allows you to withstand fixing um, hull breaches in uh, oxen where um, there's no oxygen. And it also helps when you're fighting to repel borders. You will be healing where they won't, so it usually allows your crew to stand down uh, other borders. This is dependent on the med bay. If you do not have your med bay powered up, this ability will not work. So it is always good to have the med bay powered up on um, an NG cruiser, which most ships you can deal without it. And then you send your crew in to get healed. In this situation, it's actually kind of beneficial to have your med bay powered up at all times. Now, the NG cruiser is not the easiest cruiser to starve enemies of oxygen should you be boarded. As you can see here, you only have access doors here and here. So you can kind of starve them out in this area. This area back here is really difficult to starve enemies out. And you can starve them out up in here. And even up in your pilot section if you don't have a ship to worry about. If they board in here. The advantage is if they do board in the pilot area, you're right next to the med bay. So that really helps out against borders. Your drone control is uh, back here. You can pick up crew teleporter, which... I think is here and stealth which I believe is here um, not much else on the Tauros so why don't we head uh, into the game for a minute now the Tauros like any other ship does not have um, enough to power up everything you have enough to power up your empty ship drone and your ion blast. You actually have one more drone slot more than what you need for uh, anti-drones. Or for drones, rather. Anti-drones. <laughs> now, with the Tauros, like most other ships, you really want to rush your second level shields and your second level doors before you leave the first area. So before you're out of area 1, you want level 2 shields and you want level 2 doors. But... Um, as you can see, you don't start out with the amount of scrap that you do on other ships. Uh, usually you have enough to buy a slot. Sorry, I'm a little tired. 
Normally you have enough to buy a slot somewhere. In this particular instance, you do not. So, if you want to power up your shields to level 2, you have to, you have to take your med bay offline. But you start with so much extra in a sense that it's really useful. Unlike other ships, though, you can only have three weapons. You cannot have four weapons. But to balance that out, you can have three drones in which... Um, most ships, when you install a drone control system, you're only allowed to have two drones. So that's the basic idea of that. Let's see if we can find someone to pick on. All right, here we go. Automated ship. Actually, this is going to be easy because he doesn't have any shields. We just want to target his weapons. There we go. Missile launchers offline. Now, the drawback is I can't control um, I can't control the drone so that's a minor drawback of course oh we already got a Hermes missile actually that's a pretty decent find even though um, I'm trying to think even though it's three power that's a long way to go to boost that up but the Hermes missile is pretty strong so let's see if we can find another guy with shields. <laughs> wow, <laughs> three six nine. That's that's a hell of a find right there at the start. Good gracious, this, is, this game's being nice to me. It's like here, have some weapons, have some weapons, have some weapons. All right, this is not exactly what I wanted to find, but it'll do because they have a Zoltan shield. So. Actually, the, sh the anti-ship uh, drone is good at taking out Zoltan shields because of how fast it fires. And the Ion Blast usually will do two damage when it actually connects. Ow. So this is already not going well. I'm not auto-firing. It's actually a good idea to auto-fire at the start. But there we go. Ah, screw you. Ion Blast, come on. Keep the Ion Blast on the shields to so keep the shields down, and there you go. Let the, sh let the drone do the work. It can be a little difficult to start, but once you get the ship built up with weapons um, and drones, it becomes really, really powerful. Um, it can, like I said, it can be a rough start because you're really relying on that drone and on your ion weapon on doing its work and connecting. So it's very easy to take damage if things don't go right, as you've seen. But if you can get three anti-ship drones going, uh, three level one anti-ship drones, not three level uh, two ship drones. Uh, if you can get three of those going, your ship is amazingly strong. And I've actually found it's good to have two ion blasters, uh, very powerful ion blasters, and then maybe a missile weapon. Uh, really works well, um, especially if you get like a Pegasus missile. The Hermes is okay. But if you can get like a couple ion weapons and a missile weapon and three anti-ship drones on this, you're going to be rolling over things. The one thing I forgot to mention is that this does not start with missiles. It actually starts with just fuel and drone parts. You start with no missiles, so you have to collect missiles along the way if you want to use a missile launcher. If you don't want to use a missile launcher, getting something like a burst laser Mark II, uh, a heavy laser, even a heavy laser Mark III like this one, um, something of that nature, a whole laser, you know, something that fires multiple shots, like two, three shots at least, uh, is a good alternative to a missile launcher. Um, of course, you only need one ion weapon, you can go two different weapons, but two ion weapons, three anti-ship drones, and some sort of missile weapon really seems to be the strongest combination on this ship by far. Alright, now, we have Type B, the Vortex. Now this ship is a little more difficult to use. You're only given one crew member. Okay, as you can see, you only get one NG. You're completely reliant on drones. 
drones for uh, system repair and an anti-personnel drone to help attack borders on your ship. You have a heavy ion, um, which does two ion damage per hit, and a heavy laser mark one, which only fires one shot of the heavy laser. So, yeah, you're really, really going to struggle on the start with this. Because you must get a better or another weapon really quickly. And preferably crew members. And to switch your drones out from system repair and anti-personnel to something a little more... Um, viable. Well, see, I can start these two up. But then I have nothing for my anti-personnel and for my system repairs drone. So I can take down my take that down by one and then I can activate one or the other. So actually why don't we pay into another power? Doesn't actually help anything right now, but uh, let's see how a fight goes, shall we? Alright, not exactly what I wanted for a fight, but it'll do. He has no shield, so we're just going to let him auto-fire. Well, we've already uh, penetrated his weapons really nice as the heavy laser does its job. Uh, as you can see, the weapons are still ion down. The heavy ion uh, really does quite a bit of damage. And he should be easy to finish off. There we go. And we'll see if we can find one more. Alright, this looks uh, pretty good. Not going to really penetrate my shields too much, but potential for some damage here. Boom. See, the heavy laser is exactly what it says. It's pretty heavy, causes two damage per hit instead of just one. So we're staying on the shields. Now we're going to target with the heavy laser, see if we can take the shields down permanently. Bam, there we go. Destroying the ship is pretty permanent. And contact the civilian ship, and they give us a second heavy ion. Not bad. Definitely not bad to start. But again... You need that damage for later on. Let's go one more. Let's see if we go one more. Nothing. And the only way to go here is backwards. Yeah, that that's really paying attention to my jumping methods, huh? Uh, uh, yeah, this is not going to be fun. But it's okay. I just want to get in one more fight. Let's see if I can take a little... Alright. Uh, again, a little potential for damage. Not much. Firing the heavy laser would be pointless because it would just bounce off the shields. Yeah, we took a little damage, but not where I wanted to. That, and then bam. Both weapons out, so it would be easy enough. See, I can fire up the anti-personnel drone. I can uh, let it sit there. The advantage is, as long as that they're not getting up here, I can deoxygenate. I can just like take all the oxygen out of the entire ship and just starve the whole ship of oxygen. Because my drones are not relying on oxygen. So if I get borders, it, it's pretty easy. Which, by the way, what you heard is that my internet crapped out and came back up at the same time. That's what that was there. So yeah, pretty simple. Shut down the personnel, fire up the systems drone, and he could run around and um, repair stuff at an accelerated rate. Um, anyways, to the hangar. And we'll bring this up again. And starving this out of oxygen is kind of the same as the Tauros. Is that you have two 
points here, which is really good for starving out the main areas. Once you start getting over here, it's going to take a lot to suck the oxygen out if you want to starve anyone out in this area up here. So that can be really tough. And again, you don't start with any missiles. You have to collect those along the way if you get a missile launcher uh, to use any missiles. You're not going to have any uh, off the start. You also get a drone reactor booster, which allows your drones to move faster by 50%. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not. And um, really, that's about it. Of course, they have the cube layout, but they're very easy to move around and about because there's plenty of doors connecting everything. So getting around them is not a difficult task. Again, with the Vortex, like the Tauros, the Kestrel, and whatnot, you'll want to get those level 2 shields and level 2 doors before you leave uh, Area 1, before you leave that first starting area. You really want your level 2 shields and your level 2 doors. That is uh, pretty vital, especially if you want to try starving out um, borders in the early game. But definitely, you're going to have to upgrade your weapons. The heavy ion, you can actually keep through, but you've got to upgrade that heavy laser. Uh, you've got to really... Two system repair drones. Uh, you're you're going to gather crew along the way. If you make that a priority, you can get rid of the system repair drones. You can get rid of the anti-personnel drone. And you can go with defense drones or anti-ship drones in here, which would be much, 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 much better. But it's a decent start. It's a rough start. Because you really got to transition a lot before you hit mid-game point. You really got to transition the ship. So there will be a lot of that going on, making it a lot more difficult to save up money. But in the long run, again, it can become a very powerful ship like the Toros. Um, the NG Cruisers are the first ships that I actually use to beat the final boss in this game. Uh, was the NG Cruiser with the exact stuff I mentioned. Two ion weapons, a missile weapon, and three anti-ship drones. Um, just really, really devastating uh, effect on that. And the Tauros, of course, has that potential as well. And the reality is, once you switch over from your... Um, System repair and anti-personnel drones, you can actually get rid of your drone reaction booster as well. You can sell that at a shop for a little extra scrap. So it's a little bit of uh, benefit is there uh, for that, and you can get a different augment in its place. Uh, other than that, there's not a lot to say about the NG cruisers. Of course, NG um, jump points will be more friendly, um, be a little easier to get through. But other than that, not much else. So that's about it for the um, for the NG Cruisers. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick but uh, fairly in-depth view of the NG Cruisers and little tips on how to build them. Um, next time, I think we're going to look over... Hmm, we'll probably go over the Federation Cruiser. Big ship but not as powerful as you would think. Until then, folks, this is One Big Bugger signing out. Faster Than Light 101, an in-depth look at the NG Cruisers.